I think it's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. It's the world's number one interview show, the new global home of big debates and big questions. This is really unfair. Why? We'll explain why. For all the big names. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. You're going, to, you're going to resign? Yeah, of course, I cannot continue my work. Did you feel Elvis was a controlling influence on you? And the good news? You've already found it. All new Piers Morgan Uncensored, right here, Monday to Thursday, 8 p.m. Hello and welcome to the talk. I'm Daisy McAndrew. Tonight in the next hour, Rishi Sulak faces a crunch vote on his Rwanda plan. We'll bring you the very latest live from Westminster. Gary Lineker's reported to the BBC over his latest impartiality row on the government's illegal migration plan. And anything Kate can do, the Sussexes think they can do better, apparently. Just hours after the Princess of Wales releases a video of her charity visit, Harry and Meghan go all out with their own slick promo video. Joining me on the panel are Penny Smith and Ian Collins, and JJ Anisiobi and Kevin O'Sullivan. First tonight, though, in just under an hour, Rishi Sunak will face the biggest test of his premiership so far as MPs prepare to vote on his Rwanda plan. He could face a mass rebellion by the right wing of his own party. The bill will fail if just 57 Conservatives abstain or 29 vote against the legislation that aims to send illegal migrants to Rwanda. Tory rebels were invited to crisis talks at number 10 this morning for what's been described as a smoked salmon offensive, although it's believed they were actually served bacon rolls in the hour-long breakfast meeting. No egg on face, I hope. MPs in the room say Sunak was willing to discuss tightening up or tweaking the legislation, but it may not be enough, with several saying they wouldn't vote for the bill and were only considering whether to abstain or to vote against. And some reported the PM seemed to be in stroppy teenager mode. In the Commons this afternoon, Home Secretary James Cleverley urged MPs to do what it takes to stop the boats. The British people rightly expect everyone to play by the rules and they expect us in this House to do what it takes to stop the boats. That is what voting for this legislation means. This government has a plan that will provide an alternative home for illegal arrivals to the UK and to deter others from coming here illegally. And I commend this bill to the House. Yeah. Hmm. But former Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick, he who quit over the bill, insists the legislation needs to be strengthened in order for it to work. This is not a bad bill, but it is not the best bill. I want this bill to work. The test of this policy is not, is it the strongest bill we've done? It's not, is it a good compromise? It's, will it work? Mm. That is all the public care about. They don't care about Rwanda as a scheme. They care about stopping the boats. And we are sent here to do that for them. This bill could be so much better. Let's make it better. Let's make it work. Well, on the other side of the Commons, and clearly enjoying the Tory infighting, Labour poked fun at the government's efforts to drag MPs back to Westminster to vote. Members of the International Development Committee had their jolly to the Caribbean cancelled, and the Climate Minister was forced to make a 6,000-mile round trip, very environmentally friendly, from the COP28 summit. The climate minister called back from the Dubai COP for the vote. Well, I guess they can say at least one flight has taken off as a result of this legislation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is fair enough. And three home secretaries, as we know, have made it to Rwanda, which is three times more uh, than illegal migrants have. It is really irritating most people now, I think, this this. Yet again, the infighting, the sort of tit for tat, that we're going to do this. And actually, Jenrick is right. All people care about is whether it's going to work. And there's a, a poll just out uh, tonight, YouGov, which uh, was commissioned to do a poll by the New Conservatives, so quite friendly. 
which found that 1% of people they polled think it's going to work. And when they asked... <laughs> that much? Yeah, 1%. <laughs> and when they asked people who had voted Conservative in the 2019 election, it doubled to 2% of those people who thought that it's going to work. So when are they going to, for my money, just stop wasting money, hundreds of millions of pounds, and admit that this isn't going to work. Well, the trouble is they've just dug themselves into a situation where they, they can't stop digging. Yeah, it's, it's so weird that uh, Rishi Sunak has chosen this hill to die on because yeah. it's not even yeah. his hill. It's Boris Johnson's yeah, yeah. legislation. So why he's pressing on with this guaranteed disaster is a mystery. Uh, stroppy teenager mode, that's probably because, actually, the thing about Rishi Sunak is, politically, he's a coward. Uh, he could avoid all of this nonsense if he left the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, and before everybody reels back in horror, can anybody tell me what the hell we get out of being a member of that? What does it mean? It's nothing. We could leave... Well, there's if, a big, if, and then Kev, we there's could, a, you get a massive certificate... OK, it sits <laughs> at the Home Secretary's uh, desk, present at Christmas, nicely so. framed. Exactly, exactly. We don't decay. get anything out of no, it. No, the, the, the Northern Ireland peace country. process is in big trouble yeah, if we leave. Yeah. Yeah. Interpol is in big trouble. There are very serious ramifications if uh, we leave. Shh. It, just leave. It doesn't and it matter. Shows you're a it, 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 it's, it's a question country. of political cowardice. We should leave the ECHR. Nobody he should can, do this. Or he could turn that, the yeah. boats around. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about the Rwanda bill, right? If it succeeds, you know, uh, it snowballs chance in hell and all Ooh. that. But suppose he gets it all up and running. You have a uh, migrants coming across the channel will have a 99.5 percent chance of not getting sent to Rwanda. Exactly. So it's worth them rolling the dice. Yeah. And uh, by the way, the fact that a vanishingly small number of migrants will be able to appeal if they are deported to Kigali uh, means that every single one of them will appeal. Of this is a disaster. They, well, they, come back, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry JJ, no. but I was just going to say, 400 million, and this is Rwanda, which has a population which is only marginally bigger than London, and I think this is two-thirds of their health bill, uh, mm. w which is what we have essentially paid for, and so far they haven't taken anybody. And all they had to do, ka -ching, and all they had to do in return was say, yeah, we might take, you know, a few hundred, a couple of couple of thousand maximum uh, people in there. And the point is, it won't get through because they've already said, haven't they, that, that that Rwanda is not a safe country. They've actually sort of ruled on that. It's not a safe country unless something happens in Rwanda. Well, this bill would circumnavigate that. It, but it doesn't change how it doesn't. safe Rwanda is. It, doesn't. it just changes know. words That's on a piece of paper. That, so they're, <laughs> they're asking 650 people, or these MPs, yeah. most of whom couldn't point to Rwanda on a map, uh, to vote that it's safe. It's exactly. just bizarre. It's yeah. bizarre. Yeah. So in terms of the, the people who can get off the plane, so to speak, it's it's pretty far. Pregnant women, given mm. heavily, actually not just pregnant, heavily pregnant women, and anyone with a serious, rare, or deliberating disease. That's it. It's not a case of everyone's going to be then now saying, actually, I'm heavily pregnant. They're going to have to prove this. They can't say, I've got cancer, I'm terminal, and then get pulled off. It's going to be pretty difficult um, if that's it. But then that surprises me that the ERG have gone and said, this isn't far enough. What? Who else do they think should, should be getting told, no, no, you should go. So the idea you think that pregnant women and people who are, who are dying should be sent to Rwanda? Because I would imagine that they're... That Everyone that's, has that's got the chance to at the moment, this. but you can, yeah. you can try and appeal. So even the, exactly, trying, exactly, even the yeah. trying to exactly. appeal could be the thing so, that stores it. Stop. What, what, what I think is fascinating, I mean, look, notionally, it should... If somebody threw this scenario at you at a, you know, at a classic mm. dinner party, you'd go, well, that's a good idea, yeah. If you come here, you end up going there. Well, nobody would come here. Apparently, it, that bit could work, but the Home Office's own data show that the, the boats will continue for another decade. Another decade of boats coming before we see, potentially, a stop to it. And by the so way, even the best scenario is a bad Remember story. this, literally, this happened quietly uh, in the last couple of days. The government set aside £700 million uh, yes. to deal with the boats that they believe will be coming until 2030. So this is not to stop the boats campaign. Again, this is just Rishi Sunak's uh, Planet Rishi, which is a weird uh, place yeah. uh, and an ineffective... And also, as, as he's been having all these meetings, these smoked salmon you know, breakfasts and all bacon. the rest... Oh, but yeah. Bacon butties, <laughs> all the rest of it. And he apparently has been saying, you know, just vote it through at this stage and then later at committee stage we can amend it. It doesn't work that way because they won't have a majority. You still have to have a majority. And there is absolutely no way that the opposition parties are going to vote through amendments that are going to keep 
the ERG happy later on. That's it. So it, it's complete fallacy. One nation to change it later. One nation Tories have already come out today and said they'll support the bill today at this at this stage, but they will not keep their support if they make amendments that then support the ERG. Exactly. There's no way so that can, can please both but, sides. But, but Rishi has agreed, that, 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 that apparently, because uh, Cameron's been helping Rishi been quell up. the rebels, yep. and what they have agreed, uh, the rebels have said, we'll only vote for this if you allow us to amend it afterwards. If that does happen, it'll go on for months, months. But don't, yeah. Also, don't you think that, wouldn't you just have a backup plan? I mean, this is just... But when you think... This is the backup plan, it's plan B. Oh, this is, <laughs> it is, isn't this it? Is the plan. What was the other plan? I can't think the first plan. Well, the first plan. Well, there, plan. Was, there, there, was, there was the plan to use the Navy to turn the boats <coughs> oh, yeah, around. Point, that yes. was one plan. That oh, yeah. failed miserably because the Navy said that they couldn't... That it was um, it was within their charter that they would have to save lives. Good point. And so if people deliberately jumped into the... I mean, this I'm going back yeah. you know, 18 oh, months yeah. now. But, you know, that was one of the, the wacky crazy plans that were, was never yeah. going to work. Well, the best. People the best knew it was, wouldn't. Uh, Priti Patel had a plan where you had big boats with huge nets on the side and they would come up to the dinghies and they'd scoop the dinghies out of the sea and onto the boats and then take them back. They were gonna, it was this always, is the bizarre area I think, we've been going <laughs> Go back to Sajid Javid when he was Home Secretary and the same... It was they were going to send in the cutters, they were going to send in the drones. Oh, I, I think there was going to be yeah. some submarines. Don't forget the, uh, on the sk jet ski well. patrols. Jet, jet ski, ski patrols, patrols. <laughs> paragliders. <laughs> Everybody was going to be there. Dolphins you with lasers. Dolphins yeah. <laughs> with a camera on their snout going. Meaning <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've spotted another six. <laughs> all of this yeah. business. But they had all these grand ideas. I mean, I, I don't, I still don't understand, by the way, with GPS and all the technology we have, that you can't actually do a version of some of that and just spot people coming across or spot them before they. Belgium leave. do that. Belgium yeah. do it all. Yeah, yeah. Belgium do. I don't know how successful it is. I mean, very successful. They've cut it by ninety percent. Yeah, but if they've done that, there must be a different reason. For that. Yeah, but yeah, look, I'll tell you what the reason. I'm is. guessing. Belgium, to the crossing from Nobody Belgium, goes to, Belgium. To, to to the south coast Love of Britain Belgium. is four and a half hours. That's why Belgium yeah. doesn't have a particular. There's about problem. three people it's, in the It's half an hour from yeah. Calais. I mean, the other thing I was talking about, that that new poll, the 1%, and there's been another poll out today, an Ipsos uh, poll, which says that 80% of those asked think that Sunak's doing a bad job or a very bad job yeah. on immigration. So, again, you'd think they it's already baked into his numbers that people think you're doing it, a bad yeah, job. That, but they also think Labour is I not was going to be about much to better. Say, I think it's something like it was 1 in 10, uh, uh, whatever the, the yeah. percentage is, and then I think it's 20% think that Labour would do any better... Uh, a deal. Although Keir Starmer has said, you know, one of the suggestions that they've come up with is about how they've managed to reduce the Albanians coming over by actually having a deal with Tirana. And so you'd have, you know, you go to countries and you go and have a deal with, you'd go and do deals with other countries to take back. Exactly. Yeah. And I know we're, we're going to be talking about um, yeah. the alternative from, yeah, Ms. Yeah. from Mr. Starmer, well, Sir, Sir Keir, in a minute. But there was a, a really sad story which I do, which came out today, which does or should remind everybody that these aren't just numbers when we're talking about uh, illegal uh, immigrants or when we're talking about legal migrants or particularly people coming uh, you know, on the boats. They are human beings with stories. And a, a male asylum seeker died. Um, we think it was a, a suicide, suspected suicide, um, on the Bibby Stockholm this morning. Of course, the Bibby Stockholm that was one of the very, very controversial um, suggestions where they were going to put all these asylum seekers uh, on a barge in Dorset. Yeah. And then it turned out that they had Legionnaire's disease or something like that. Uh, in it and it was costing you know, loads and loads of money to have this yeah. empty barge. Anyway, apparently there are 200 or thereabouts um, migrants living on that barge and refugee charities are blaming the government for causing uh, the death. Obviously, we've no, what, what, we've no I, idea. I don't know how they would leap to that and it would be insensitive, I think, for anybody to try and leap to reasons behind yeah. something like that. I mean, I don't think the barge itself is... I mean, you're not stuck on there. You can, you can leave the barge, you can go out, you can do all those kind of things. So it's not as if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and can't do anything. I think fundamentally, just to go back to the wider question, what this is really about is the Conservatives have just forgotten how to be Conservative. I think that's the base Well, but there isn't of all of a Conservative party. Correct. There are multiple because Conservative parties. Because you've got Rishi... I mean, there's five right-wing factions. There's the One Nation Conservatives, all these various other subdivisions of, which we haven't seen... We, there's all, they've always enjoyed fighting like ferrets in a sack, and they, they like doing it in broad daylight. Mm. The Tories love a bit of public scrapping. But if they had a leader that said... These are our values, this is what we stick with. At the moment, he's trying to appease that gallery over yeah. there, he's going to that gallery. Or oh, let's try, let's have some bacon sarnies with you lot. 
Uh, let's sit and break bread with you guys over there. And we'll try and... You can't no, and, legislate and it, and by committee just, like and, that and when you're And it all just minister. looks like he's trying to save his job rather than Correct. sort yeah. out a crisis yeah. which people are genuinely worried about. <clears throat> and, of course, it happened with David Cameron, didn't it, with Brexit, you know, again, trying to appease the backbenchers. Yeah. Always well, Europe. Bring, bring back, back, bring back Harold McMillan. All of them are dysfunctional. We need. <laughs> <laughs> OK, on that bombshell of bring back McMillan, we will move <laughs> on. Thank you, Collins. With the crunch... Rwanda vote less than an hour away. Keir Starmer slammed the plan today as a gimmick and says Labour will vote against it tonight. That's next here on The Talk. We're here. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using Excel bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. So. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. And welcome back to The Talk. Now, Sir Keir Starmer has blasted the Tory psychodrama over their Rwanda plan and claims Britain is being left ungoverned while Conservatives fight like rats in a sack. The Labour leader seized on the huge divisions within the government over Rishi Sunak's efforts to deport asylum seekers. Starmer branded the Rwanda scheme a gimmick during his speech on the fourth anniversary of the 2019 general election. Stopping the boats means stopping the gimmicks. And if they can't find a way to do that, if they can't find a way to focus on the job, fix our problems without breaking international law, unlike every government before them, then it's time to stand aside and let the Labour Party do it for them. Well, he continued his efforts to reassure voters that Labour had changed since Jeremy Corbyn was leader and pledged to deport illegal migrants faster than the Tories. Common sense 
is rolling your sleeves up and solving these problems practically, not indulging in some kind of political performance art. And this goes for stopping the boats as well. It's not about wave machines or armoured jet skis or schemes like Rwanda you know will never work. It's about doing the basics better, the mundane stuff, the bureaucratic stuff, busting the backlogs, rebuilding a functioning asylum system, removing people more quickly so you don't have to run up hotel bills and a cross-border police force that can smash the smuggler glangs at source. Well, Labour will oppose the bill tonight, and Starmer says he'll scrap the Rwanda scheme if he becomes Prime Minister, but he would consider offshore processing, saying he'd look at any scheme that might work. And that <laughs> is what they've been doing for the last four or five <laughs> years. I mean, I'm not suggesting that Labour could do any worse, because if you look at the evidence around you, it's almost impossible to see how anybody could do any worse. But I don't dispute the fact. And I remember finding myself in an unlikely situation at a bar with a very senior official from the Home Office about a year or so ago. And he said he doesn't know whether to laugh or cry when he sees people say, you know, they're doing nothing over there. He said it's, it is non-stop. He blamed the French partly for what was happening. He said they don't really do their bit despite purporting uh, that, they, that they do. And I don't think for, that Starmer, I mean, he talks about, well, let's get the gangs, let's get the gangs, we'll go after the gangs. Well, if, you could just, if it was that easy, everybody would go after the gangs. At the moment, we've got two home affairs departments, the French and the British, two intelligence departments, the French and the British, two military departments, the French and the British, two leaders, the French and the British, and we can't find a single smuggler. So I don't know what the hell is going on between those two countries, and I don't know what dynamite Starmer believes he's got up his sleeve to make this thing go away. Nothing. He's got nothing. There you go, there's the answer. A year ago... Next subject. A year, a year ago, me and Nicola Thorpe have talked today, sat on this show, saying we should be processing people in other countries. Set yep. up one in France, set up one in North yeah. Africa. That's where we should be doing it. But we still have to change the law because people who still come here on small boats have to be deported straight away. Because there's no point saying you can only get processed in Calais if you can still get a small boat here and stay here exactly. and appeal. Exactly. So whatever Starmer says, he still has to change the law. And at the moment, he's, he's acting as if he's, he's going to come in and, as you say, well, Labour in power now, so small yeah. work's going to we'll stop. We'll sort this tomorrow. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Starmer is a uh, diet Tory. Yeah, they only they're... have... And, they've, oh, they're, and they have caught some of the people smugglers, but only by following mm. the, the, the actual supply chain, haven't they? That's how they've found it. For example, they've found the boats and then they, and then they tra trace it back and the, they discover that somebody has been actually buying a lot of boats and keeping... And that's the only way they do it. They certainly don't go and catch them whilst they're putting people in, because they're too clever. They just move around. Yeah, there are two political uh, politicians' tropes with all of this. And one is, oh, we'll set up uh, centres to process applications abroad in France. Uh, the problem with that is uh, migrants can just walk straight past the migrant centre and get onto boats. Yeah. So uh, that does not work. Uh, and the other political trope is, we need to, this is what Labour said, we need to talk to the French more seriously about this. <laughs> Don't they realise, in this psychodrama, drama of the migrant crisis, the French are bad actors. Uh, you know, they're like those people on EastEnders. No, they seriously, <laughs> are, they, they are uh, not uh, uh, ambassadors of goodwill when it comes to the migrant crisis because uh, Ma uh, Macron wants the migrants to leave France because to keep them in France, to stop them crossing the boat, well, of, is a vote loser. All of that yeah. is true, but isn't what we, we are all fundamentally saying in this discussion is that trying to promise or attempting mm. to promise to stop the boats is a fool's errand. Yeah. That's yeah. the point. It's not... And, yes, you know, there are probably better ways of trying to do it than you're doing. But saying you're going to stop them completely, that's the bit that the, the, the public has cottoned on to. It's impossible. So stop trying to sell us a fantasy. And, and also... The, the amount of people coming on the boats is actually dwarfed by the people who are coming in in other ways. It is who are true. also Reducing illegal the immigrants. numbers, yes. And Stop also, them, no. we should also point out as well that it always feels like Britain's at the, at the front of this and it's, you know, that, that we're the only ones who are battling this. And we have to say, mm -hmm. Germany's having problems, France is having problems, Italy's having problems, Spain's having problems. They are all having problems. Yeah. By the way, can the Prime Minister stop standing behind that lectern with stop the boat? <laughs> so to get rid of the stop, so just stand, it would be kind of interesting and bizarre, wouldn't it? He just stands behind the lectern, the boat. The <laughs> boat. <laughs> yeah, it's far more interesting. Um, the, grand, the Tory grandees have come out in force today. Lord Hague 
William Hague to you and me, JJ. Uh, today warned the Conservatives they could be permanently ousted from power at the next general election as he urged Tory MPs not to torpedo Rishi's Rwanda bill. He argued that Tory MPs are picking holes in a plan they've only got opposition to look forward to as he called for unity ahead of the crunch vote this evening. William Hague gave this warning on Times Radio this morning. And there's no guarantee of ever coming back. You know, the Conservatives have come back every time in the past for 200 years, but no guarantee politics will change a lot over the next 20, 30 years. The world will change a lot. And you're just stepping off that change in the world and becoming a spectator at a crucial time if you go into opposition. So I want Rishi Sunak to do to win his vote, to keep doing well over the coming year, to win an election. So I'm not predicting that will happen. I'm just saying it can happen. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in a month of Sundays. <laughs> there it is. Do you know what I find interesting about this? It's a bit like when Blair came in in 1997 and they suddenly, the waiting list on the NHS went down and the reason they went down is because they used the private sector to treat people for things like knee and ankle opera, that, that kind of mm. stuff. I, I reckon Keir Starmer... I, I keep seeing sort of squealing, sizzling lefties on things like Question Time go, these are the most vulnerable people on earth. And I think, <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure that's completely true. Some of them might be, most of them, I don't for one second think, are. Oh, there is a group of people that are, but they're just not those people. Starmer's going to come in. He's going to come up with something far more radical and far more what you would call right-wing than anything the Tories dare to do. It well, won't solve the whole problem. <laughs> it will start to solve it. And for some reason, all of those people that attack the Tories as but uncaring, you, evil, dirty Tories, that lot, you're absolutely are going to be supporting Keir Starmer's well, position. Well, Wes Streeting is already, taught in, in the health department, you know, shadowing the health department, he's already saying some incredibly unlefty stuff yeah. about what he yeah. wants to do about the NHS. Stop uh, giving people but, over 50 any kind of treatment. That was a bit rough, wasn't it, when he said that? that was, he didn't say that. Only the lefties can say those things. Correct. That's the point, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. I think Starmer will do something. It won't, it won't solve the, the crisis for many years, but he will do something, but he'll be able to do it under the banner of, well, I'm Labour, so therefore my version of events is far kinder. Uh, exactly. I'm not Tories. mean. But, but, that's, but that's, how yeah. to, that's how Tony Blair got through. Yeah. Correct, yeah, yeah. To managed to get the, the, yeah. the right the wingers on board sector. as well. Yes, yeah. but Blair had popularity. 46% of people think Starmer's doing a bad job as they believe that. True. Only 35% say he's doing well. Two different He's fish. still probably going to win, though, isn't he? Of course he'll win, because we yeah. hate the Tories now. But he made a big tactical error. He can win by never saying anything again between now and the election. Yeah. So these big banner speeches in front of industrial machinery mm. and big trucks that politicians seem to like, <clears throat> like making speeches around... Uh, he should just shut up. When your enemy yeah. is making mistakes, don't interrupt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Correct. Well, to a different controversy about the government's approach to illegal migration now. Gary Lineker's latest impartiality route isn't going away after a Tory MP complained to the BBC Director General about his conduct. The Match of the Day presenter signed an open letter slamming the government's handling of the refugee crisis as ever more uncaring, chaotic and costly. Lineker sparred with several Conservative MPs over the issue on social media, including Jonathan Gullis, who told Talk TV his comments have gone too far. I do actually think there's a potential breach here of the social media guidelines that Gary Lineker has signed up to, which says that an individual politician should not be insulted personally, and sadly Gary Lineker decided to do that. So I have written to Tim Davey, the Director General of the BBC, to look into this. Tim Davey is now under pressure to act with reports. BBC chiefs are talking to Lineker about the issue. Former senior BBC administrator Roger Bolton told Talk TV it's a clear breach of the rules. I think the first tweet was OK, was within the rules. I think the second one about four chaps, chaps is outside it. I think that second tweet is clearly in contravention of whatever, you know, whether you think these guidelines are fair or not, it's in contravention and it's a real problem for the BBC. I think Jonathan Gullis is completely correct. I know the semantics of it, well, he didn't put it on social media, so he's not broken the rules. He's still doing what he likes to do, criticise the government, criticise any political party. You can do that unless you are told specifically by your bosses you can't do this. But for Lineker, he's done it. He's seemingly going to get away with it again. And Tim Davey looks completely spiked. I don't think it's he the will second, get away with it. It's the second tweet, though, isn't it? It's the, yeah, it's the yeah, tweet look, look, that's now this, done it. Because that the, is a clear brief. Yeah. This is a chronology of it, right? So he signs this petition, 
uh, from a bunch of lovies saying the Rwanda plan is awful. Uh, and in a really mealy-mouthed way, it was only a couple of days ago, the BBC said, so everybody said, well, surely this is against the rules that you just set up. BBC, in a really mealy-mouthed way, said, ah, no, 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 our rules were for social media. Correct. This was a petition, it was mm. paper. Then he gets involved in a squabble <laughs> Uh, on Twitter, on X, on With social shots. media. And uh, not only uh, would I say it, so, so Tim Davies has subsequently released a statement saying, you know, presenters are allowed to uh, yeah. give their opinions, but they must, remain, they must remain civil and they must not impugn other people's characters. So in this squabble he had subsequent to the petition on social media, Correct. he essentially accused Jonathan Cullis of not being able to read Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then the four chaps uh, chap stuff about yeah. the defence secretary. He clearly was not civil to those people, and he impugned their character. Yeah. He has a one hundred percent clearly broken their social media rules. And if uh, Tim Davy doesn't do anything about it, he's got an authority problem. You yeah. see, I just I just think that the thing is that if they weren't in such chaos, I don't think they'd give two hoots. I mean, I think the Rishi Sunak was was right. His office said, you know, we're not going to get distracted by the views of individuals. The Prime Minister is confident this is an approach that works not just for the UK public but to protect vulnerable people from criminal gangs. And, you know, this part of me just thinks, yeah, you know, if they, if they actually weren't... Yeah, but he's the broken the rules, the, is the point. Yes, I know that he's broken the rules, but... So he has you know, to go, I, doesn't he? It, well, <laughs> well, we, know. Roger, we, think... we played that clip there, Penny, of Roger Bolton, who I spoke to yeah. earlier today, and... You know, he's a bit, bit of a legend in his own he skin, is. Roger. BBC man. He's a BBC, yeah, a BBC man, man. And yeah. he's, you know, he, he knows his way around TV and the rules and the regs, etc. He said, pretty much the same, he said, look, the first thing was a bit ambiguous because it was an open letter. However, if you're not sure about that, the second thing, the tweeting definitely breaks the rules. His prediction was that Gary Lineker will not, after this football season, be presenting Match of the Day. Yeah. He says he thinks right. be, they won't use this as a reason. They'll just say, look, you know, it's been great working with you, Gazza. You've been fantastic. Time's up now, anyway, going to move on. What does anyone think Gary's doing this? Because he's clearly goading the BBC, and if he loves the BBC, as he says... You wouldn't be doing it. Uh, why is he mm. doing it? Because well, every big... time he does that, he damages because the Because he, he does have a very big empire of his own now. Yeah, exactly. He? He's yes. running all these podcasts, care, you know, which are yeah. very successful, earning, yeah. apparently, a lot of money. Yeah. So I wonder if you're right. I wonder if he is kind of playing chicken. And but also, I mean, maybe I there's he, a financial element. Yeah. But he doesn't just work for BBC. He does stuff for lots He's of other channels yeah, yeah. too and other American networks. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't need the BBC pay packet. He can get money elsewhere. And selling Walker's Chris. Chris. And selling Chris. <laughs> <laughs> because other brands are available. And also, he, is, he, he, he has been going down this political route, so he might feel that this actually uh, helps in, in other areas of his... I don't so think he cares the, the, football yeah, fans, the football fans amongst you, of which... Just the boys... And I am a football fan, but I don't. Uh -huh. I don't watch uh -huh. you know, um, match of the day very often. But would it? Would you Huge care? Huge football fan. <laughs> it would make ma match of the day as uh, as successful successively lost uh, viewers every season for about the last five or six years. People go elsewhere. But would it People be worse to... without Gary Lineker? No, it would make no, no difference, no. Make no. No the, difference the, the at all. The ratings uh, rocketed when he was suspended. So when when he wasn't that there. Novel, novelty value? But that, no, yeah, yeah there might have been. But it wouldn't matter. If you got somebody that was good in that role, who knows their sport as, as well as they can broadcast, yeah. it would make it, not a jot of difference. In, in fact, and it would save Lineker the BBC is symbolic of everything that's wrong with the BBC in the sense that I, this is a person they don't need to pay. I was, that just, I was just yeah. about to point that out, which is the BBC is facing the squeeze on its on its money, isn't it? And and so many of the people that they have million who get paid so yeah. much money Old would people actually pay his wages. Would, would, uh, but <laughs> thank you. Don't look at me in that way. <laughs> but the point is, you Couldn't you could them. actually you could actually spend the money on bringing up people who actually are really good, but yeah. who are... Who are uh, like like, like Joey Barton, for example. BBC, yeah, why not? I don't know. BBC oh, staff, yeah, really? Along with Alex Scott. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> BBC staff are so upset with Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're really fed up with him. And as I, I, think, I think he's testing the waters. I don't think yeah. he cares if he keeps his job yeah. or not. You're probably not. There it is. Right, coming up, just hours after Kate releases a video of her charity work, Harry and Meghan try to go one better with a slick PR video of their own campaigning. The Royal Row continues next on The Talk. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. 
criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are Just you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to The Talk. Harry and Meghan have been accused of releasing a slick PR video just hours after the Princess of Wales released a clip of her own charity work. The Sussexes released this montage of the Archwell Foundation's achievements from the past year. Standing strong if you dream and believe You can find a way back home Amazing. It was released very close to Kate's own video of her charity work with a baby bank. She took her three children to sort clothes for donations in Windsor. Here, there's lots of people who give up their time, oh, and there are lots of volunteers who come and help out. And so you're the volunteers for this evening. Right, are you ready? What we would like you to do is try and choose some presents for some children who are similar age to you guys. So if you think about what you would like to, to play with. The youngest royals got stuck into their charitable work with Charlotte and George being well behaved. But Louis stole the show yet again. He was delighted with finding a gorilla toy and chucking clothes on piles rather than folding them. Meanwhile, it was revealed today that Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation isn't in the greatest of shapes, with donations dropping by almost £9 million in the past year. Yeah, that was a, a, that was a story 
story that broke this afternoon when uh, Alex and I were doing crosstalk right at the end of the show, and we were suddenly told, oh, uh, their donations over the past year have plummeted by $11 million in American money, obviously. Yep. Uh, and uh, it turns out the week, year before they got $13 million, uh, so they were down to two... To, to, Two million this year, and those two million were from two donors. Yeah. So basically, people have stopped giving to the Archwell Foundation. And in terms of the release of Archwell's video, they usually release their sort of annual re video report in January. It was suddenly hastened back to one day after uh, uh, William and Kate's video. Uh, this is clearly some kind of ludicrous competition being organised, I would suggest, by Meghan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they, these two people, uh, Harry and Meghan, they need to sort of change their game somehow or other because it isn't working, is it? I also read, though, that the previous year, the donation of $10 million was from one donor. So, yeah. That's so, right. yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. So, nobody ever knocked no one ever... the door with a, a rosette <laughs> or an ID. This is Ferrari and me. <laughs> Apparently, as soon as they got it, they said, thanks very much, Oprah. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> but I think they're worth $60 million. They're massively overexposed. So, I think people are looking at the charity and thinking, that they've probably got enough money for the charity. No, yeah, no one is going to really be... Right. be uh, and perhaps, the perhaps the people sort of conflate their private work, you know, their, their, yeah, their, their well. earning work with the foundation, yeah. to be fair to them. And they think, well, maybe, you know, you we shouldn't be giving to them because they're making 20 million bucks but a year. You, but don't you think the reason why this came out was not as a kind of tit-for-tat against what Kate and uh, William were doing? I do, think, were doing. Kate, I do yeah. think that's right, Kate. You do? Because yeah. I, I don't. I just I just think it's actually as a result of, of more to do with the donations and everything, hurrying could, it yeah, out could, to try and... Yeah. I think it kind of feels more like that. Cause a bit actually, of both, maybe? Yeah, well, a bit of both. And actually, I mean, they have done good things it's just that they could have done they could have done better well, things. i think normally archwell found no, that no, no, i had absolutely. a totally different from watching those two uh promotional videos i just thought well william and kate won't have to buy any christmas presents this year yeah, you see cool. them loading their car up <laughs> at the end of that yeah come on now. Alive. very Stay brazen there. that wasn't did they nick that <laughs> come on kids get it in the back we're off <laughs> yeah. yeah got a good little number today kate we'll yeah. get down this baby have you got your kick stuff for christmas <laughs> oh was there a kaplunk grab there? your buckaroo kids we're off you can do human buckaroo, you it's can. much more fun. And I like you know, the, the fact that uh, Meghan and Harry put a uh, take me back to your happy place. You know who sang that? Yes, I do. No. Prince Andrew. What? Oh, oh will you stop it? What? It's Prince... actually two Glaswegian they brothers. Called it, they called it a favour from a, from a brother-in-law or whatever he is. <laughs> Cousin, whatever. Is he an uncle? I don't yeah. know what he is. Uncle. Who sang it, seriously? <laughs> two Glaswegian brothers. Was it? Yes. And they, they wrote it about their, oh, the their dad. the no, no, I can't remember what there they're is, called. We can hear it now. But well, we're going we're we're to find out. <coughs> also, when I went on to the Mail, which um, uh, there was an article on the Mail there, of course, they're not, they're not great supporters, of course, the people who, apart from uh, anything else, the people who read it, definitely not supporters, because they'd a lot of the comments were all about, can she just stop hugging people? Why don't she go, go and hug her dad? There was oh, a lot I of... Don't, I know, yeah. about Megan, I know. A lot Meghan, of hugging and a lot of bags in those videos, wasn't there? <laughs> a lot there of was, filling up of I bags, mean, I, I a lot of hugging. With, I agree with Penny. I think they are kind of, you know, damned if they do and damned if they don't. Mm. When, when they're trying to make money for themselves, everyone says you know, they're grifters and uh, they're greedy yeah, yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And when they're trying to raise money for charity and do some stuff that they clearly do really care about, yeah. then they're told of being publicity seekers. I, it was interesting, James Holt, who's their CEO, had quite a, a big role in, in that video. Um, do you know who he used to work for? Go on. Prince Andrew? I've Nick, got no idea. Can you Who? stop saying Prince Andrew? Yeah, he's he's on Prince Andrew. 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 <laughs> Someone's got to find a job for the bloke. He used to work for Nick Clegg in the coalition sure. government. Even, even worse. Yes, he was a Lib Dem yeah. who and worked for Nick now he's their Clegg. advisor. Now he's their CEO. He's the sort of larger blonde chap who Wouldn't was Wouldn't that preclude way. you from ever working again if you'd worked from, for Nick? Oh, there he was. There he was. Yeah, I think we've clearly clearly just not. seen him. We've just seen him. Do you That's him. That this might be uh, um, also because the fact that they haven't come out, come out <laughs> with the well, I'm, <laughs> can, can we just get a, lurch a, off the screen? A little, a little <laughs> a bit of applause for the producers for finding a bit. Very well, well done. Very, very you look quick. Really surprised yeah, that man. Mug shots. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think it's also? Sorry, I was just going to say that. I mean, the other thing is that they haven't come out at all about the Scoby book, have they? About Endgame, and they have yeah, been, uh, and a lot uh, of people have said about the fact that the it's fact made them more toxic that book. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do you think, again, that that's another thing where they went, how about this? We they do need this a PR offensive, yeah. yeah. I, I think that what they've got to think about here is on both <laughs> sides of the Atlantic, I know they've still got their fans, 
in, in, uh, in fact, he's their last fan. Uh, but to, to be serious for a second, basically, on both sides of the Atlantic, it comes down to this. I don't think people like them anymore. That's why they're not getting any donations. Uh, they have got to change their ways. They've got to raise their game. They've I got to somehow work out Kevin, a new... Look, we say it, we slag off uh, Meghan Markle and say she's the one who's behind this. But Meghan Markle wears an outfit, it sells out. When, when she relaunches her... Website, the tick, a little blogger, or let. When is, is she going to do that? Well, when, when she chooses to, she's got she's got plenty and of cash. When is she going to become hurry. an influencer? Every single she day. is an influencer. Oh, this is what she already do. sells out. She already sells out without Forget making any it. money off it currently. So she's going to do just fine. Let me tell you also, something. She's a loser and she's over. <laughs> she's not a loser and she's not over. She's patently not well, true. In, she's in not her own over. way, she's not a loser. Like, so but... isn't, the, isn't the issue here? Who said it on the talk last week about uh, their recognition factor is not that great in America? Yeah, no, that was that was Daisy talking. Yeah, just one American person, yeah. just yeah. one American, and came to that conclusion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I can, I can imagine. <laughs> no, I can imagine that we we watch through the prism. We know about the Netflix, and so obviously people have heard of them. But I don't, to the degree that you need to retain and maintain yeah. a multi-million pound charity. I'm not absolutely sure. They're not up there. They, they're no, not they Oprah. They flew to Vegas for that for whoever was playing Katy Perry's concert with a, sl a slew of celebrities. Private jet. Right, yeah, by private jet, Cameron Diaz and co were there, proper Hollywood A-listers. Yeah. People still stood up and applauded when they saw those two walk in. J -J whatever whatever, whatever yes. you're hearing about them Wait, not being a big deal in the US, oh, the it's Americans, BS. Yeah. The yeah. Americans stand Just up and applaud all sorts of things. Give it up. You look, you've lost. I haven't lost. You have. Haven't. They're going to prove you all wrong. They're not Martha Stewart. Athia's not here tonight to back you up. You've had it. You've had it. Now, uh, coming up, uh, we are counting down the final minutes to Rishi, uh, Rishi Runak, it says there. Rishi Sunak's crunch vote on his Rwanda plan. It's the biggest test of his premiership, so does he have the votes? We're live in Westminster next on the tour. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They've that won. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that.
Welcome back to the talk. Now it is crunch time for the Prime Minister as MPs get ready to vote on his controversial Rwanda bill in the next few minutes. As we mentioned earlier, if only 29 Conservative MPs revolt or more than 57 abstain, that bill will fail. Rishi Sunak has spent most of today personally attempting to convince Tory rebels not to vote against the bill. It's been reported that he's been privately telling MPs that changes to the legislation could take place at later stages. The thing is, as Kevin just said earlier, what is this, it, it's so, it is so tight, this one, and it's such a strange kind of, you know, one to go, almost to go out on, really, isn't it? Because it's just... Yes, it's, why do you want to die why, on this hill? On this one. Not on even his one. hill, as I said. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, as Kev said, it's not, it's not even his point. We, we, no. In fact, we did earlier today on, on Salt TV, we went through the chronology of this story because it's worth a reminder yeah. sometimes to go, this is how it all happened, of course. And there is Boris standing there announcing yeah. the Rwanda scheme. With Priti Patel. R with Priti Patel. Rishi yeah. could have come in and gone, do you know what, I've looked at it, frankly, it's cobblers, it's not going to work, so we're going to do yeah. something else. And, but he's not just stuck with it. I think he's so afraid of being seen as a man not in charge that he's fo over-focused, and this has become a almost hysterical attraction to a policy that even he does. I'll wait for the autobiography. I reckon in there somewhere he'll say, to be honest, I never really believe this. And I think at the moment, I said on Talk TV last night, it will go through. I'm now thinking... You're wrong. I'm not you sure it will. <laughs> I don't think it will go through. I still think it will go through. I think he'll just get it through. Yeah. But that doesn't make him look like a man in charge. No, it doesn't. Well, that's it doesn't. The thing. He's, he's no, the party is in tatters. He's gone groveling yeah. to everyone, promising everyone everything. Correct. But it'd be less embarrassing for... It'll still be embarrassing if he has to literally withdraw the, the vote at this time. But I think uh, with, with David... Sorry, with Lord Cameron calling <laughs> up and... William Hague ringing people. Everyone, the book brought all the big guns to try and convince these young people yeah. in the party. Come on, come and, on, you and, new conservatives, come and support us. And don't you think that that the public, who of course this is this is to appease, well, not to appease the public, but because the public actually, that for them, this is an important subject. The public is watching him giving bacon baps all round and trying to persuade people and just, again, just throw, yeah. going, well, well, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to. A, well, let's, um, let, let's find out what is going on in Westminster. We know that the those various right-wing factions of the party, Conservative Party have all been meeting and keeping the lobby journalists waiting whilst they decided what to do. So let's find out. Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Cardwell, is right in the thick of the action. Peter, what's the latest? <laughs> Breaking news here in Westminster, Daisy, and that is that Mark Frost, who is the chairman of the European Research Group, he is having a meeting with colleagues from other uh, subgroups within the Conservative Party. He has said in the last few minutes, on behalf of the five groups, we have decided collectively that we cannot support the Rwanda Bill tonight because of its many omissions. He's saying rebels will table amendments at committee stage. He hopes the government will accept them, but if not, we agree to reserve the right to vote against it at the third reading. Now, this is the second reading, so it's a big question in terms of what actually happens in eight minutes' time when the vote is called. This is very serious for Rishi Sunak. He may not have the numbers. Lots of people are talking about abstaining within the last 10 minutes or so. There have been reports that about 40 MPs are thinking of abstaining. If 57 of them do in total, well, then Rishi Sunak could lose this vote. So it's going to be very, very tight. It's a big question. Let me just crunch those numbers a little bit. So it, it, if it looks like, as you were just saying, and, and, and I've been just reading on Twitter as well, it looks like 40 of those various um, to the right groups are going to abstain. So they're not saying they're going to vote against, they're saying they're going to abstain. Then, as we've been saying, he, um, that group would need another 17 to abstain to kill the bill. Could you see where those 17 might potentially come from? Because we know that the opposition parties are going to vote with, not against. That's right. I mean, it's very, very interesting in terms of how this gets through, what Rishi Sunak is looking at in terms of numbers in his own party, and essentially that's all that matters. The question is as well, will there be more people abstaining? Will there be some within that who vote against? Because if you have 29 people, Conservative MPs voting against, or you have 57 Conservative MPs abstaining, well, or a combination of the two, well, then Rishi Sunak is in serious trouble. So there are many combinations of the votes that could cause him harm. And even if he wins this, even 
by a whisker. He has a working majority of 56, not 80 anymore. That the, was the case four years ago today when it was the 2019 election. Boris Johnson famously won that 80-strong majority. That's not the case anymore, so it's 56. This is down to the wire. We'll know in seven minutes' time when they start voting. That process will take a little while. We'll bring you all of it, of course, as well as the result here on Talk TV. Peter, great stuff. Thank you very much, Peter Cardwell, uh, there. Impossible. It's impossible for Sunak. Damien Green of One Nation's One Nation Tories said, we support the bill, and amended, but if anyone brings forward any amendments that breach our international obligations, Ooh. we vote against those amendments at future stages. The bill must stay as it is. Yeah. The uh, government yeah. to their yes. guns. So how can he... The argument is the opposite. Yeah. So, so, exactly. So, so, so he might... So the One Nation is, uh, could, could vote against it. No, they're not going to vote it today, point. but they would vote against any If there amendments. are a member. Yeah. 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 He's between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Isn't the, a very hard place. Yeah. yeah. The, the bill is sunk sooner yeah. or later. It's where the Sunak is sunk with it, really. Yeah. yeah, I think he's, it's almost existential for him, isn't it? I mean, it's not... He's just going to carry on. This is a shambles. He has to. Uh, yeah. Will he... Well, it, I wonder, you wonder, actually, if this if this will trigger a, an early general election. I well, mean, that is... That's the... got to be it. It's got to be an early general election because Johnny Mercer, um, Penny Mordaunt and Kemi Badenoch, who are the three frontrunners to be the next leader of the Tories, yeah. are not going to inherit... And Suella Braverman. Yeah. Or Brav she ain't going to be in Braverman. They're she not going to take well on this be. role yeah. to lose the, the most, the biggest annihilation... What about the, the dream Tories ticket, ever? mate? Boris <laughs> and ticket. Farage. Read my column Boris today. Boris and Nigel. It's a okay. desperation <laughs> ticket. OK, we're going from the sublime to the ridiculous or the other way around. I'm not sure what it is. So next up, we are handing you over to Rosanna Lockwood with Prime Time, a proper safe pair of hands to take you to the crunch vote. Well, I don't know, Daisy. I would say it's pretty much the ridiculous at this point. The government... It, once again, we're held hostage by the House of Commons holding another vote at the same time prime time is going on on this crucial Rwanda policy. Of course, everything doesn't revolve around this show, but we will be revolving everything around the politics this evening. We're going to be analysing what this means for Sunat, that a huge majority of his MPs may be abstaining from the vote tonight. Stay with us for that. All right, I think we definitely will be staying with you, Rosanna. Thank you so much. That's all we've got time for here, though, on The Talk. I'm Daisy McAndrew. Thank you to tonight's panellists, Penny Smith and Ian Collins. He's back at three tomorrow afternoon. Thank you to JJ Anasiobi and Kevin O'Sullivan. He's back at 9.30. Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking to a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you'll have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. <laughs>